Hey everyone, welcome back to Dev Parkour. In this video, I want to talk about what it means to be a SaaS software product. And as the title says, when SaaS isn't really SaaS. So there are many different ways to uh, host an application in the cloud. Uh, and a lot of them are even called SaaS but sometimes they aren't really what I would consider true SaaS. So in this video, we're gonna explore kind of the spectrum between what I call hosted and what I call true SaaS and everything in between. Um, I've, got, I've kind of picked out uh, four specific points that again, it is a spectrum, it is more of a continuum. Uh, you probably could have you know, additional hybrids between some of the ones that I've picked out. Um, but hopefully this will give you a better picture of uh, mainly what's out there. Uh, the main reason that I'm doing this is because um, it might make sense at different points in the life of your particular software product to be one style of SaaS or hosted and at another point in, it, in its life to be a different style of SaaS or hosted. That can also depend on scale you know, the number of people using your software, um, or it could just be a, a time-based thing, right? It's a lot easier to think when you're building something initially uh, as, a, as a single cohesive application, and then, uh, you know, as people use it, then you start scaling up pieces independently and, and the architecture can kind of grow and evolve. Um, and you can, you can see many different talks on, on how you know, specific companies that you've heard of, people like Netflix, Reddit, uh, Amazon, uh, you know, how they've, how they've done things uh, as, they've, as they've evolved throughout their, you know, multi-year, in some cases, multi-decade history. So without further ado, let's get into it. So at the very beginning of the spectrum, or the one end of the spectrum, we have what I'm calling single tenant hosted. Um, and that's basically, you have an application uh, that you're running on a server and every person, client, customer who needs an instance of that application, you spin up a new VM somewhere, install the application on it and give them access to it. Uh, the classic example of this uh, that probably everybody's familiar with is like a database server. Uh, if someone needs an instance of a database server, um, you're going to spin up a, a VM specifically for whatever database they're, they're looking for, be it Oracle or MySQL or anything like that. And, uh, you know, that is their VPS. You're not going to share it with a bunch of other people. Uh, it is one, one server for one client. Another customer needs the same thing. They get their own new instance. Um, yeah, this is this is the VPS model. At the other end of the spectrum, we have what I'm calling true SaaS. And that is legitimately there is one instance of the application and everybody, doesn't matter who they are, whether they're your customers, whether uh, they're uh, your customers' customers or your customers' users, everybody logs into the same instance of the application. Um, and this isn't, I, I, I want to make a clear distinction between what I'm describing and uh, something where everybody uses the same login screen, but as soon as you log in, you get redirected to a separate, um, separate stack, a separate instance of the application. That's a, that's a whole nother category um, that I'll describe in more detail in just a minute. What I'm talking about is something like Facebook or, um, you know, Twitter, Instagram, those aren't necessarily the best examples because they are generally more user facing. Um, we start getting into this, this SaaS versus hosted, uh, discussion more in terms of, uh, you know, uh, enterprise software. So hosted enterprise software. Um, but one example might be something like, um, Trello, right? That's the example that I picked. Um, and I assume that Trello still works this way. It's basically, it is one instance of the application, 
and uh, everybody likes into it. You go to Trello.com and it's all the same thing. You don't have a separate set of machines for you know, a particular corporation's version of Trello or something like that. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure how Jira works, uh, but it feels kind of like Jira might work the same way, even though each individual company might get their own subdomain that's used more, it, it feels to me. I, I'm not, I don't know the details of, of how Jira is built, but it feels a lot more like those in, individual subdomains are uh, basically just a, a piece of the URL that the application uses to figure out what, uh, what scope of data is, uh, is represented and, and should be pulled from the database. Other than that, it feels like it's one giant application uh, that's, that's scaled to handle all of the customers, one instance of the entire infrastructure. Now in between, you can obviously have multiple different hybrids of hosted versus SaaS. Uh, for instance, you could have uh, parts of the application, maybe the data store is, is multi-tenant to support uh, you know, interactions between uh, different tenants, different customers. This is, this is actually something that Slack had to deal with recently when they built out their Slack Connect feature. Uh, so back in the day, Slack was almost a single tenant architecture. It was actually a, a kind of a shared tenant, which we'll get into in a minute. Um, but essentially, each customer, each, uh, each organization logged into their own instance of Slack. Um, and everything that they needed to do was isolated to that one instance. With the introduction of the Slack Connect feature, now you could send messages between Slack instances. So they actually had to uh, rethink how they were building, how they built out their architecture. And there are now some pieces of Slack that are truly multi-tenant to support that communication between individual Slack instances. Um, so with that, let's talk about shared tenant hosting, uh, which is uh, where essentially where, where Slack started. Uh, so you may have heard of shared tenant uh, from the kind of from the VPS or from the web hosting world. Basically the idea here is that multiple customers uh, might be physically hosted on the same set of machines. In the case of a Slack, uh, a SaaS uh, software package, what this ends up meaning is that uh, there is one set of machines, one, one stack, one, one infrastructure that uh, multiple customers are, are hosted on. Uh, so in the case of Slack, they had some number of databases and they hosted all of their customers with that some number of databases. And there was basically a hashing algorithm that took the key, the subdomain that you used to log into Slack and routed you to a specific, uh, I think they had pairs of database servers. Uh, so that meant that, or with that, they were able to uh, kind of pair maybe one large customer would get their own pair of database servers, but a bunch of smaller customers would get, would all share another pair of database servers. Um, this is, again, somewhere in between uh, SaaS, because SaaS is kind of like all shared tenant, um, and single tenant hosted, because it is, it, it, it seems a lot more like independent stacks for independent customers, but at the infrastructure level, uh, they are actually leveraging some kind of economies of scale by being able to uh, share the resources, pool the resources for a bunch of customers. And then closer to the, the true SaaS end of the spectrum, another point on, on this, this continuum that I've picked out is what I'm calling uh, hybrid SaaS, um, which is a kind of multi-tenant, um, and basically this, the, the reason I, I, I pulled this out as its own thing um, is because this is, um, this is more, it's, it's closer to the true SaaS end than, uh, than, than shared tenant. Um, but it is, 
it's kind of difficult to, to describe, but basically uh, you do have your own individual, say, subdomain or something like that. I guess this is more like the feel that you get from Jira. Uh, so I mentioned that that was kind of on, on the true SAS end. So that we get into some nuances here. Um, but there are scenarios where you might want to draw, where you want to make the entire application multi-tenant, uh, that kind of the front end application multi-tenant, right? So everybody gets the same front end. You don't want to install that over and over again, but depending on say in, in Jira's case, the subdomain that you log into, you might go against a different database server, right? That, that makes sense, right? Uh, you know, I want my company's data to be separated from someone else's data. Um, and then, and really this gets into, you know, how do you want to scale? Uh, or what needs to scale, right? If you are an application that ends up being very heavy on the data layer, people generate a lot of user created data, it might start to make sense to build out separate data layers for each uh, tenant, each customer where the, the UI can still be fairly, um, uh, you know, shared. Uh, can, you can have one single UI infrastructure for, for all your customers. Or you might have to go the opposite direction like, like Slack does, uh, where the, the front end is, is fairly, fairly taxing and each individual customer needs their own copy of the front end but because there is some shared communication between customers, you need kind of a shared backend or a shared, a shared data layer or sh partially shared data layer, right? I, I believe with the introduction of the Slack Connect feature, the, um, the bulk of an organization's data is still physically separated, is still on their own database server, but it's just the, the Slack Connect pieces that are uh, that are on some some shared infrastructure. Um, so hopefully this gives you a good idea of you know the, the spectrum that exists and, and where you might want to start along that spectrum and why you might want to move uh, from from one part of the spectrum to another. Um, I highly recommend finding on YouTube that most of these are conference talks, but you can find you know the infrastructure of insert your favorite company here. Um, one thing to point out and. Uh, some of, the, some of these talks uh, point this out as well. Just because a particular infrastructure works for insert company here, doesn't mean it will work for you. They are solving their specific types of problems, which if you're solving the same problems or similar problems, great, that might be helpful. If you are not solving the same problems or not running into the same problems, don't assume that their infrastructure is going to work perfectly for you. Um, definitely tailor your infrastructure for the problems that you're running into and the solutions that you need, the problems that you need to solve. Um, and uh, make sure that you measure or have data or you know, have some way of uh, determining, is my current infrastructure working the way it needs to for my current level of growth and my continued growth? So hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you have comments or questions, you know where to leave them down below. Uh, if you are not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button, click that notification bell so you'll be notified when new videos come out. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video, which I think is tomorrow. Thanks for watching.